Welcome to this make with me video. We are going to be making a pop art cane. Yes, they're going to look that fancy. You can use any colors you like. I'm using these ones, obviously. <laughs> like, you know, hello. Enjoy the video. Have fun. We're going to be using Poppy Seed by Souffle, which is by Sculpey. You know it's a favorite. We have rolled that out or popped that through my Lucy Clay machine uh, to about 1.5 mil in thickness, uh, just into thin sheets that we can use. And what we're going to do, I mean, okay, I've shot, okay, it's back again. All right, so I'm going to run through the colors here, but I'll talk about them more in a minute. So this is Mustard by Primo. The pink is Party Pink, which is a custom mix. That is a scrap mix of just what I had sitting in my drawers. Pale pink, same thing. Fluoro Yellow by Primo. Lavender by Fimo. Cobalt by Primo. Don't know this one. <laughs> and don't know that one. So the purpose of this, what we're going to be doing is just getting these snakes a little bit even measuring off to the length that I want them so I don't waste the clay uh, and then I'm just going to measure off all of them so they're all the same length and you're going to see how this works. In terms of the colors that I've chosen well I've really just gone for a random bright poppy sort of style. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason I just felt like I needed a yellow then I needed a purple then I needed a blue then I needed a pink then I needed a peach and always a random color for me. So the random color in here is probably the green and the mustard. They sort of, they stand out. Now, like I said, I can't remember what the green is. I feel like it's um, a mixture of primo green and white and then a little bit of, that's what it is. It is fluorescent yellow with green from primo and white. So I don't know the exact ratios. I'm so sorry. All we're going to be doing here is wrapping each snake in a little bit of black. What I do, if you can see what I'm doing there, what I do is I will wrap it around and then roll it till the piece on the top makes a little dent in the bottom side of the slab. So then you can slice it and you get the perfect join. You'll see me do it right now. So we roll it, roll, 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 till that piece makes a little dent. There we go. And then we slice it there and get the perfect join. Now, the only reason why I like to do that is so that we don't end up with a, one little bit of thick black where it's doubled up. So that is the easiest way to do it. I do it with all my canes. It's one of those little hacks. Now you know. Uh, so all we're doing is wrapping all these colors. How gorgeous is that cobalt blue, by the way? Just the vibrancy just gives me life. Now, a little tip for you with the fluoro yellow. If you want it to look amazing, add a little bit of white to it, take it down a notch. Um, fluoro colors are really bad for plaquing, air bubbles and cracks. And I just find they photograph and look much nicer if you add a tiny bit of white. Don't do this. Don't do this. This is where she, <laughs> that is not ideal. <laughs> anyway. Um, the coral and the pink, they're literally just scrap mixes. So just a bunch of clay that I had sitting in my scrap drawer. I've just mixed it together. More than likely, they are a mixture of like raspberry or mandarin. Look at that. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Now, okay, we're getting to the serious stuff here. We're shaping. Now, this is going to look like it's happening really fast, but all I'm doing is pressing down and squeezing so that I get a teardrop shape with the pink. I don't know how I'm going to plan to use this. Well, I do, but I'm going to pretend that I don't just for the purpose of this video. You know what I mean? So I'm giving myself a couple of options. So I roll them out and then I give myself like a couple of, okay, so for this, <laughs> not on this one. So for this one, I do like lots of little options. Uh, you'll see why, but I like to do different sizes, different shapes. Now, if you can imagine, these are going to go together in like a pop art or abstract cane. Probably, we would probably call it a contemporary cane. Um, this I love doing this shape. So it's kind of like a little um, oval. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. Seriously, I'm just shaping them. And I just want a whole lot of random shapes. 
So that's what's happening. Lightly roll that if you do it. Don't do these too thin because otherwise you'll start losing the black. It'll start um, becoming too thin. But how cute is that? So you get kind of like dashes. And as you can see, I'm giving myself two of each or in the case of the yellow, a few extra. I mean, you know. <laughs> this one here, we do a little bit of a rainbow arch vibe. That's a little bit harder to do, but it comes together and looks really cute. What do we do with the blue? I can't remember. Oh, we make a triangle. That's very cute. So all of this is just a lot of patience, a lot of squeezing, a lot of crimping, a lot of smoothing. Now, you can actually reduce it down and make them longer, as you can see, and that is by pressing and pulling. I tend not to roll it unless obviously it's a round shape, but if you're doing like obviously a triangle or some other shape, you just need to be patient and press and pull, press and pull, press and pull, press and pull. So what are we doing here? Oh yeah, another cute little, okay, yep, she's putting it, what's happened? Oh, squeezy, squeezy, there we go. So, okay, <laughs> I wanted four of those. With the mustard, I think we just keep it, hmm, what are we doing? It's not a triangle. Is it a triangle? Oh, Oh, okay, it's a semicircle. How cute is that? And then we're going in with the peach. And this one I do know we do almost like a petal. So squeezing down on one side so that it looks like a teardrop shape again. And then reducing it at the same time. Putting it together. <gasps> that is the sweetest thing. I actually really love this shape. So cutting it again. And if I was to keep going, I would probably get a really cute little petal cane. But I'm going to go with a semicircle on this because I kind of want that, that vibe. So that's what I'm after. Now, after we've trimmed all the edges off, got the shapes exactly how we want them. The best and best advice I can give you with a cane is to work looking down on the cane at how it would be sliced. You're going to see me do it here right now. So I'm going to work on it this way, looking down at it. So I'm not going to try and like place a whole lot of things and, oh, okay. We're squeezing, we're squeezing, we're squeezing. Yes, yes, yes. It's very cute. There we go. And then we just start piecing the puzzle together, I guess. That's the best way to put it. Now, I don't get too stressed about losing shape or like losing a specific shape on these. So I don't... I don't tend to pack or um, fill with black clay. So if you wanted to keep the shapes really, really crisp, so exactly how they look right now, there are, you would put a little bit of black in certain places. But as this cane goes along, you'll see it becomes a little bit more abstract. It's already looking really fun. I'm already obsessed <laughs> I've actually remade this a couple of times as well, not going to lie. So I just place them randomly. And the great thing about giving myself those two out of that one snake, as you can see with the purple, you're able to place them on opposite sides. And so it just sort of gives you more options instead of just doing one. Now, what you could do is just do one of those colors. So like say just one purple shape and you can put that into a cane and then cut it and then put it together again but I actually like to make a bigger cane so that it doesn't look like it's been joined together it's it's purposefully made like I've made that intentionally that big uh, it actually is so much fun to do this and if you haven't had a go at it I highly recommend that you have a little play now, do it on a smaller scale. It doesn't have to be on a big scale. This can use a lot of clay. And when we're in a, a global clay crisis, you don't want to be wasting clay. So plan it out a little bit if you can. Choose your colors wisely. Think about what you're going to do. You don't need to use the same amount that I'm doing. You could do half the amount just to save you on some clay. So, yeah. Just have a little plan in mind because otherwise, what are we doing here? Why am I making it thinner? Am I turning this into a rainbow? <gasps> yes, she is. <laughs> okay, roll it out a bit more, Sheree. Yes, 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 you've got this. There we go. Oh, 
I mean, look, it works. It works. Was it necessary? I'm not sure. I'm just digging all the colors. Now, this is something that I want to talk about. I wanted to be sure to give you the encouragement to just try using color in ways you've never used it before. Don't be afraid to put lime green and mustard together. Don't be afraid to use two shades of pink or, you know, like there are rules like color theory and things like that with color, but they're made to be broken. They're made to be pushed, you know, Ooh, she's panning over. Oh, look how cute that looks. Oh, I can't wait to slice it with you. Uh, just cause I already know what it looks like when it's sliced and it's very exciting. So it's time for you to see that. It's time for you to see that. Oh no, hang on. We've got to reduce it first. So reducing, obviously I've speed, I've sped this up. This was probably at least half an hour of sitting there and gently pressing and pulling and also getting it into a square shape. So I prefer to have a, what well, you know, like semi square shape because it's easier to lay. Oh, here we go. This is the moment. This is the moment. Silence. That's right, Mac. That's right. Can you see that? Yes. This is what I want to see you make. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. And I know you're inspired right now and you're looking at the color and you're like, shit, this is amazing. Because it is. I mean, look, it also might not be what you like. <laughs> you might be like, mm-hmm. I was questioning my choice of putting the green in. However, I feel like the green makes it different. So I'm sticking with it. I'm just, I'm trying to be confident with color. So I'm going to encourage you to be confident with color as well. Now, what I'm doing is getting another bar of poppy seed. Yes, I know. So frivolous. I'm going to condition it, as you can see. And then I'm going to roll it out to, I think it's about two mil. Oh, she's going, oh, I was just about to say she's going old school. It is going to be two mil because those are my two mil guides. So this is the slab that we're going to use. I like to trim it off every now and then. Just, it's nicer to work on a trimmed slab. Here we go. We're going to be slicing and putting them onto the slab. Try and get your slices as even as possible. Try not to go too thick. What you want to do is probably have your slice around 1.5 mil and your slab around 1.5 mil. So you come in at about three mil and then you can go down a little bit. Um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'm talking about depth of your slab. So if your backing is too thick and then you cut them thick, when you go to roll down, all the pattern is going to disappear. Whereas if you try to give yourself within a mil of the final depth that you actually want, so like 1.5 mil or 2 mil for your base depth and then cut those at about a mil, then you're going to be closer to the ideal slab depth or the late like the earring depth and then you're not going to lose too much pattern. I actually, I'm boring myself with my own conversation right now. <laughs> Be sure when you're placing your little canes on that you don't place them all facing the same way. Make sure that you move them around so that the pattern turns around. Flip them over, turn them around. Um, and yeah, so that way then it looks a little bit more random. Now, if you were doing a traditional kaleidoscope cane, then obviously you'd want them to all look perfect and all be going the same way. But that's not what I'm making. <laughs> I'm making something contemporary and fun, slightly abstract. I'm not about it being perfect. It's going to be perfectly imperfect, which is definitely my style. <laughs> definitely my style. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes, yes. Roll that shit out now, babe. Roll that shit out. Let's go. So when I'm rolling, the first thing we're going to do, clean our roller. Let's not roll in some residue into our beautiful slab. Now, I've said this before. I feel like I've said this before in another one of my videos. So what we need to do is go back and forth without actually taking it down in depth so that we can join up any little bits. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going back and forth, and all that's doing is pushing those joins together. You can see it happening right in front of your eyes. And I'm not actually rolling it down. 
Once those gaps are all joined up, that's when we start to roll down using our guides. But for now, we're just joining all the little gaps and bits and pieces. So rather than trying to plug them with bits of slab and then all your pattern goes crazy, just do the little rolling method. It's super easy. Yep, there we go. Still going. And so you don't lose any of the pattern this way. You don't end up with big black gaps um, where your little slices haven't joined together properly. So it should look like this. Delish. Grabbing my guides out now. Grabbing my... Okay, no, still rolling down. Come on, mate. Okay. Do we even use guides in this? Or do I just go freeball it? Am I fully freeballing this? <gasps> what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I doing this? Oh, there they are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was triggered. Totally triggered then. I was like... Mm. Oh, no, she's taking them away again. What are we doing? Okay, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Oh, they're there. I feel like I should probably just cut this bit out of the video because this is hectic. I'm not coping. Anyone that does slabs understands why this is stressing me out. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, we're going to the two mills. <laughs> I can say that the reason why I wanted to check for two mil is because I'm actually going to resin coat these. So I knew I was going to resin coat them. Ideal depth for resin coating is two mil uh, because you're going to add a layer of doming resin on top. So it's going to make them thicker to about three mil. If you have them too thick to start with, then add a layer of resin, you're just going to end up with heavy earrings. So Two mil is good. These guides actually have written on them ideal resin coating depth. And it's just a little reminder when you're using them that these are the best ones if you're going to resin coat. Anyway, I'm boring myself with my own commentary. Is that a thing? <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do with this is we're going to cut out some components, obviously. Uh, the reason why I pick it up and move it around all the time is because I don't want it to stick to my tile. Now, obviously, there are times you want it to stick to your tile so that you can cut out um, components and what have you and have them stick to the tile and do a skeleton pool and, oh, it's so cute, whatever. Uh, but when you're doing a slab and you want your pattern not to all go one way, you need to be moving it around so that it stays nice and even. Now, if I put that through my clay machine, which... I don't recommend you put any slab through a clay machine unless it's like a marble or some sort of howlite type thing. If it's a slab like this or a slab with patterns, it should never go through the clay machine. You should do a roll down very gently, moving your slab around or moving your roller around so that you keep it. What's happening there? Tuck it back in. Thank you. So that you can keep your pattern kind of not warped. Because you know the moment you put it through a machine, it just looks like somebody pulled it. Pulled it? <laughs> it just looks like somebody stretched it. Oh, here we go. Cute shapes. Yes. The thing I love about this is that there's a little bit of color on every single one. So no component misses out on anything. Um, I'm kind of going through a bit of a phase of particular shapes at the moment. So anyway, I'll leave you to... <laughs> watch this without me talking over it maybe I should just be quiet and just put some music on in the background that'd be boring though it's so much easier to watch it when it's this fast guys also I'm doing this in one take because sometimes my voiceovers take me for freaking ever oh, mother for kosher I was gonna say the f word and I didn't because I'm really respectful of the people that can't handle it uh, anyway, what was I going to say? I don't know what I was talking about. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. Feels like it's taking forever. As you know, one of my rules with a slab, make sure that you get every single little bit. Don't waste it. Use tiny little, tiny little cutters like this. Make sure they're clean. And get as many as you can. Look at these cute little studs. They're perfect for giveaways. Little micro studs. You can pop them on a card. Put them in your customer's order. And just 
know that you've used up as much of the slab as possible. The cool thing that I'm going to show you in this video is what we do with the scraps. And I do a couple of little things with it and I'm kind of proud of what I show you. So, you know, buckle up. It's about to get spicy in here. Not really. I'm terrible at skeleton pools. So these are the components we ended up with. I check out my Instagram if you want to see what they look like now because they have been resin coated, they have been carded, and they look fucking beautiful. Okay, I'll try and beep that out. <laughs> but not really. Oh, sorry. It's too late. It's happened. Now, here's what we're going to do with the scraps. That's the skeleton from what we just cut up. And then we've also got the... The really ugly end of the cane and some random slices that I can't use because I can't and I'm shoving it all into this yes this little ball of gorgeousness is about to be the cutest little cane so check it out it's gonna take me a minute and just rolling oh no we're squeezing okay we made it square cute okay let's cut it how fun is that? Yes. Now that is literally the skeleton of what we just made. Yep, there we go. Look at that magic. Mm, what are we doing with this? Let's see. I think we chop it all up. Yep. She's she's going to try and get another slice. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to work out. Mm. That's right. Just choppy, choppy. Chop, 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 chop. So much more satisfying, guys, with it being sped up. Can you imagine watching this in real time? It's already bad enough as it is. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> honestly don't know why I bothered even slicing that before. It was dangerous. I shouldn't have done it. Now, with this, you could totally do the black paint thing where you add some acrylic paint and some liquid clay and you could come up with like a cool stone, especially using the neons and the like light pinks and purples and things like that. That could look quite cool. I'm just not really into that. So I'm just going to go with a basic slab. Scrap slab, scrap cane. I know what I'm talking about, remember? Oh, this is where we make a cute um, Bajalo style uh, little deal. So check this out because it's kind of cute. So we made some little stripes. Yeah. Using the leftover. <laughs> this is fun, actually. This was just an experiment. Uh, I was like, oh, what can I do? What can I show them? And I was like, why can't I stack the little slices and make stripes out of them? And it totally works. So I'm all about this life. Um, I've just really discovered the joy of some of these traditional techniques like Bajalo and things like that where you uh, basically make a stripe or a scrap stripe and then just slice them and align them so that the pattern just goes like this. I just think it's super fun. Okay, so then she ooh, rolls it a little bit. Cute. Trims it. And look at that, ready to go for studs. <gasps> so fun. It's very, it's almost pixelated. That's what it kind of gives me the feel of that sort of pixel style. I don't know. It just looks fun. It just looks super fun. I, I think what my goal was with this was just to show you that you can use a skeleton of what you've just made and make, how many have we got there? one, two different types of scraps, and then we're just going to do another scrap slab out of those scraps. It's just like a scrap heaven. It just keeps getting better and better. So there you go. It all looks so fancy. I just want to say thank you. If you got to this part of the video, you are a <laughs> fan girl, fan person, fan human. You're awesome. That's what I was going to say. And I'm going to apologize in advance for the fact that this is so boring, me talking, but I wanted to do it in one take. I just needed to get it done. <laughs> I needed this to be a thing. It's been a while since I've got anything on YouTube and I thought I'd just do it a little bit more casual, you know, because you can see what I'm doing. I don't need to explain everything, right? Or do I? Anyway, 
I think I like this one just as much as I like the pop art one. They're all bloody cute. You guys need to try this out. Make sure you put it on your Instagram and tag me so I can see it. If you're not following me on Instagram, where the bloody hell are you? If you want to see more of this style, check out my Patreon. It is amazing. It's fun. You'll get to hang out with me in my studio and make heaps of cool shit like this. All right. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had fun. I hope you haven't fallen asleep. If you have, wake up. This is colorful goodness at its best. Have a great day. Make some cool shit and tag me in Instagram. All right. Bye. See you in another year. <laughs> I hope not. I hope it's sooner than that. Okay. I don't know. I'm just, I'm talking now just for the hell of it. Okay. Bye.